Hi, welcome back. So last time we spoke about lipid geometry and spontaneous curvature and we had discussed the various shapes of the lipids that can give rise to different shapes of membranes. In other words, how the molecular component shapes, geometry, can affect the microscopic lipid assembly. And we talked about a so-called critical parameter, packing parameter, uh, which we defined as V upon L by A naught. And L is the tail length, the hydrophobic tail. A naught is the area of the surface head group. And V is the volume of the tail. In such a case, uh, we said, and we actually tried to demonstrate this, that uh, micellar phases, hexagonal phases, and uh, other phases, in fact, we only did this for micellar phases, can be shown geometrically to fall within a certain range. So, uh, a conical uh, lipid shape with a critical parameter, packing parameter of less than 1 by 3, less than or equal to, I think we said, uh, will form spherical micelles. And uh, a similar uh, range of values uh, between one thirds and half will give, with a truncated cone, will give you cylindrical micelles. Half to one will give you a truncated cone, flexible bilayers, vesicles. Approximately one will give you a planar bilayer. So in other words, if you have cylinders, you will have cylindrical structures that nicely pack into, are more favored to form just simply a flat layer. And inverted truncated cones or wedges form these kind of inverted micelles, which I think we also called hexagonal phases. And you kind of see that in how they are arranged with each other, with the hydrophobic tails outside and forming little cavities inside of the hydrophilic parts. This is all theory due to Israel Achveli, uh, 1994. This is what we talked about previously, along with membrane models and the mobility of uh, membrane components, which we um, which we discussed in terms of some experimental methodologies, which some of which we're going to deal with later when an expert comes to talk about FCS. FRAP has, I think, been part of the experimental techniques I've already uploaded as a technique presentation a write up slide, and we will discuss it some other time, not for today. So, for today, I want to talk to you about membrane shape change and curvature, GUVs and lipid compositions, deformation mechanics, and how to measure the mechanical properties of membranes using micropipette uh, aspiration. Um, for membrane stiffness measurements and the last part I think has been dealt very briefly by K already so it's going to be a bit of a revision. So let's get straight to it. With regard to membrane shape change and curvature we can see that in experimental systems in cells in fact nanoscopic curvature can be generated by uh, lipid composition or protein motif insertion. So you see in the top row the lipid composition that uh, determines uh, the curvature induction by these kind of conical lipids being inserted in a certain specific way causing either positive or negative curvatures. Cylindrical lipids on the other hand will then pin it and create a so-called straight line with non-curved structures or clustering of transmembrane proteins with either positive or negative curvature. All this is with respect to the inside of the cell. Protein motif insertion in, in that sense uh, with either amphipathic helices or these kind of C2 domains, loop insertions, bar domains can also cause curvature. And these are very important physiologically. And some of you may have heard the talks of Thomas or other people on endocytosis like uh, Nagaraj. And uh, these may be familiar to you. But this is nanoscopic. In other words, if you remember, we talk about order of magnitude estimates and we say that proteins are of a few nanometers in size. So a few proteins will still be a few nanometers, maybe tens of nanometers. So your curvature is over tens of nanometers in size. So this is important to bear in mind because this is in contrast to microscopic curvature where you can actually see at micrometer scale. Yeah? And these are protein scaffolding structures like COP1 coats, COP2 coats, clathrin coats. These are very important for basically endocytosis, budding, and uh, bar domain proteins uh, side to side ar uh, arrangement is seen, or tip to tip arrangement is seen to be one of the many ways by which uh, these kind of microscopic, micron sized curvature structures can be formed. These are vital for cell physiology. And uh, finally, coming to the whole cell what we are now referring to as microscopic, that is tens of micrometers uh, ranges of curvature can be seen in the formation of pilopodia, microtubule mediated tension, tubulation and lamellipodia are uh, driven by either actin or microtubules. And uh, these have a lot of basis in biochemistry and this uh, paper that I've referred to here is a nice review that uh, you're welcome to go back and look at in Journal of Cell Science from 2015. But all this is fine because Understanding the mechanics of these membranes requires a more purified system, a more uh, 
easily manipulated, easily measured system. And for that, uh, giant unilamellar vesicles have proven to be a godsend, or uh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't use such words, uh, have proven to be rather uh, serendici serendiciously uh, useful. Uh, these, in fact, consist of lipid bilayer sheets and aqueous environments that can deform and close into vesicles to shield the free edges from water. Under the right conditions, some vesicles can be giant. Uh, giant means what? A few micrometers to tens of micrometers, so giant in the cellular context. One single lipid bilayer sheet, therefore, then is defined as a giant unilaminar vesicle when it is of micrometer scale in diameter. The uses range from indeed basic membrane research to synthetic biology. Indeed, in GUV work, it has been found strangely that uh, not just does the does the GUV form these structures, but if you have more than one kind of lipid driving it. So you remember we talked about geometry determining membrane uh, structure. If you put, they assumed that we had only one kind of lipid in it. Uh, if you have more than one kind, then as these two um, colors, uh, blue indicating liquid ordered, blue uh, liquid ordered phase lipid, perylene and uh, disordered phase uh, formed by DPP can form indeed structures that self segregate in other words they you can say even phase separate and this separation is also dependent on the ambient temperature as you see on the left hand side at 25 degrees celsius it forms this sort of vesicle with a with a blob to it it almost resembles a saccharomyces cerevisiae budding cell uh, whereas at 50 degrees celsius at a higher temperature um, line tension changes cause this kind of uh, almost uh, fingering like structure these kind of shape changes are very interesting because they tell us that while on the one hand from our reductionist from our I'm sorry from our cell biological inference uh, you need intracellular mechanics you need uh, signaling to form structures but this is telling you that lipid itself the lipid composition itself has amazing wide dynamics which can actually spontaneously form these kind of shapes uh, indeed the spontaneous budding by modifying the surface area to volume ratio by osmotic swelling or temperatures used frequently to in fact generate giant unilamellar vesicles of a desired size and shape. Uh, so that is as far as GUVs go. Uh, we will return to them in a bit before which I want to because we need to discuss what are these mechanical properties that we are going to be discussing. So the mechanical properties relate to the deformation of membranes and these deformations are in terms of either stretch uh, deformation. So you see the, the stretching of the membrane which sort of goes uh, parallel to its uh, surface area. Uh, it is increased in area in fact. Bending which relates to creating curvature, either uniform curvature meaning one curvature or multiple complex curvatures. Change in thickness which is basically making the membrane compress meaning to say the leaflets come closer or further apart. So it can be either increase or decrease and shear which is angular uh, uh, deformation. So let's get to it. So in case of stretch the expression or for the free energy of deformation is uh, the free energy Ga of areas deformation half Ka times delta A square upon A naught where delta A is the change in area, A naught is the initial area and G stretch is the um, energy of uh, stretching. So in such a case the area stretch modulus Ka is the important parameter to bear in mind or in other words it's what determines the dynamics of uh, or, or rather the extent to which the membrane can be stretched or the stiffness of the membrane effectively. Uh, please note that this is kind of analogous to your spring expression. Yeah? Bending on the other hand is a little bit more complex because if you have x y coordinates and if you have a reference plane then you can measure it in terms of a height above a surface and if you have a complex um, bend or curvature then you need to take multiple planes and find the curvatures along each of those planes and uh, the best fit circle through that plane gives you the curvature in that plane and you have then multiple planes and there is a theorem of principal curvatures which tells you that there is only one choice of orthogonal planes for which the curvature takes two extreme values the highest and the lowest and these are then referred to as the principal curvature and using this and the idea that you can break the membrane into patches you can actually find what is the deformation of the membrane in such a case the energy of bending is indeed then half k by r square r being the radius of curvature and uh, k being the bending modulus which is um, which is formulated in terms of the uh, thickness and the area stretch modulus of the membrane. Indeed, the uh, thickness change itself uh, is defined uh, then in terms of the change in the width of the membrane. Uh, 
W0 is the equilibrium thickness and W is the changed thickness. And you can write the energy in terms of uh, half kappa and then the integral over the squared difference between the current thickness to the initial dif thickness div uh, divided by the initial thickness or the so-called equilibrium thickness. Um, shear deformation is then just simply quantified in terms of the angle. So uh, given all this, uh, we can say that uh, we have now some idea at least of what we need to know in terms of uh, what the mechanical deformations of membranes are, uh, but can we measure them? And, uh, and to do that, we take refuge in very simple theory that is almost 200 years, 150, 200 years old, and this is exactly what Kaya talked to you about that comes from vesicles and soap bubbles. So giant unilamellar vesicles, which I just mentioned earlier, which are bilayers um, of micrometer scale proved to be very good model systems for this kind of measurement. So GUV deformation can be achieved by creating tension of different values. So the tension values over here are 1.1 millinewton per meter, 3.2 millinewton per meter, and 7.3 millinewton per meter. And the experiment here involves visualizing the lipid by head group labeling the uh, lipid, lipid using rhodamine, and increasing the hydrostatic pressure and measuring the area and tension as uh, as the tension is increased. So this pipette aspiration or micropipette aspiration experiment is set up in the following way that you... So right, as we were saying, the pipette aspiration assay exerts a pressure, induces a tube of length L, and the vesicle radius changes along with the tube length radius. It turns out that as the direct expansion area increases, the tension also increases or in other words ten increasing tension leads to direct increased direct expansion area and the slope of that allows us to estimate the area deformation modulus. Um, these values area stretch moduli of uh, different vesicles made up of different lipids are indeed demonstrating here that it is in the range um, of 250 millinewtons per meter. This brings us in a way to this idea that you can now combine all these uh, terms and uh, come up with a real membrane definition. And now, you know, we, we always aim to try and get at whole cells, but uh, the simplest cell we can start with is a cell that at least doesn't have a nucleus, it doesn't have any very, very clear internal organelles and uh, does not undergo any gene expression changes to cell, uh, sh cell, cell shape change response. So, so, and that is the red blood cell. And this uh, Lim, Votis and Mukhopadhyay uh, model has uh, stood somehow the test of time, which essentially considers area dis difference elasticity and uh, takes into consideration the bending modulus, that is kappa B, the area change uh, modulus, that is K ba kappa bar, um, and, uh, and these combined with the area and the thickness of the membrane allow them to be able to simulate, so in the left hand column of this uh, image series you see the experimental data and the right hand side is the simulation of this model which when they included the membrane cytoskeleton force which they call FMS, the membrane cytoskeleton, then gives them the full transition uh, which is due only to osmotic pressure from the discocytes that is to say the normal red blood cells into these multiple shaped stromatocyte types 1 and 2, 1, 2 and 3 echinocytes that is star shaped structures 1, 2 and 3 and a few others. So we would like to say that we are getting closer to an understanding of the membrane but there are a lot of things more to be done because a pure uh, red blood cell membrane structure is not really a representation of what a uh, true membrane might be like. So I'm going to conclude that we've talked a little bit about membrane scales and functions, viewing membranes from molecules to microscopes, models of membranes, dynamics, how to measure them. We we will talk about some of these methods, packing geometry, curvature and pressure, bending, stretching, shear thickness, vesicles and soap bubble approximations. And uh, we will return to the measurement later. But for the moment, I'm going to stop here and uh, we will continue next time with a slightly different topic which relates to measurement but of something that we had not talked about which is related to a paper and then move on to entropy and statistical mechanics.